Hi guys and welcome back to Cute Life Hacks. I'm Joanna and in this video I'll show you four really weird DIY hacks which I hope you haven't seen before. For instance, did you know that it's possible to make air dry clay using nail polish or that you can actually make butter using a plastic bottle? So just keep on watching to see all kinds of fun things you can do when you're bored. If you're new here then a big welcome and please remember to hit that subscribe button to become a cutinator. And be sure to follow me on Instagram under my username macaroon. My Instagram story is basically the closest I get to vlogging, so you'll always know what I'm doing in between making videos. And by the way, next week my Instagram story is going to be crazy, so please go follow me there if you haven't done so yet. And now without further ado, let's get started with our DIY hacks. The first DIY is super easy and you only need a paper straw and some hot glue. Apply a small blob of glue to the end and carefully blow through it to create bubbles that you can touch. Of course, don't touch the glue with your fingers when applying it and try to avoid using plastic straws which could melt. The cool thing about this method is that it creates really unusual shapes and you can keep on doing it and get something different every time. On our second attempt, we ended up with this surprisingly cute shape that looks a lot like a bird or a seal. I think this DIY would also look amazing if you used colorful or even glittery hot glue. If you do try it out, then please tag me on Instagram so I can see how it looks. Next up, we have nail polish clay. To make this, we'll need nail polish and cornstarch or corn flour. If you decide to use clear polish, then you'll get a creamy and slightly translucent finish similar to cold porcelain or resin clay. Though of course, you can also use any other color to give your clay different shades. This is a great DIY to use up any leftover nail polish that's already starting to dry up, or which you know that you're not going to use again. Simply pour the polish onto a crafting surface and then add some cornstarch. Then mix until everything forms a dough. I'm simply eyeballing the quantities here, so feel free to add more of any ingredient until everything comes together. If you watched my DIY paper clay video, then I mentioned some of the characteristics that good modeling clay should have. This nail polish clay is definitely not that great, and it's on the borderline between a Play-Doh and a clay. However, it does hold its shape when dry, so you can use it to make very simple things, such as a heart, or donut, or this tiny bear here. First, make a small ball for the head and brush on a thin layer of clear polish. This clay isn't that good at sticking to itself, so if you want to join pieces together, then be sure to use nail polish for that. Then add two tiny balls for ears and then leave everything to dry on some non-stick baking paper. I find that this clay has a tendency to stick to the table, so it's best to leave it on some silicone or parchment paper. And depending on how much cornstarch you used, the shape might start sinking a bit while it's drying. I think this effect actually looks quite cute since it reminds me of those animal bread buns or mochi, however you can always sculpt the shape back into place with your fingers while the clay is still soft. For the final step, I'm going to add some details using chocolate deco sauce, though of course you can always use paint or dark nail polish instead. For this DIY, I'm actually going to use a sewing needle as a brush since our piece is so tiny. Simply dip it into the paint and then carefully add the eyes, nose and mouth. I find it's easiest to start with the nose and then position that right in the center of the face. Then add eyes to the left and right, making sure that everything is mostly symmetrical. To finish up, I'm going to use some blusher for the cheeks, and as always, you can substitute this using eyeshadow or pastel dust instead. Just apply it using a cotton bud or tiny brush, and your cute miniature bear is done. As mentioned earlier, this nail polish clay is more of a boredom-busting DIY hack. If you're planning to make things as presents or to sell, then I'd definitely recommend using a store-bought air dry clay or polymer clay. But if you're just looking for a quick craft project to do with stuff that you have at home, then this idea should keep you entertained for a while. For the next one, I'm going to show you how to make easy fake snow. A lot of you probably have a ton of snow outside your windows right now, but this is a great hack for warmer months or for anyone living in countries where it rarely gets cold. 
All you have to do is squeeze some shaving foam inside a box and freeze it. We tried a couple of experiments to see whether using a freezer bag or a plastic box makes a difference, and we also tested out a shower foam and a body lotion foam. None of these actually made a big impact, and the results turned out great every time, which you'll see in a bit. If you decide to use a freezer bag, then make sure you don't squash it too much, because that will press the air out of the foam. And of course, you should pick something with a smell that you like, because the snow will have that fragrance. As you can see here, this looks and feels just like real snow. You can even make snowballs with this and throw them at your friends or siblings. And this prank is especially fun if you live in a warm place without any snow right now. Of course, once you start playing with it, the snow will eventually melt into a lotion-like texture. If any of this gets onto fabric or carpets, then you can clean it up with lots of warm water. You can even experiment with food coloring to create colorful or marbled fake snow. The last DIY hack is pretty funny, but surprisingly useful. To make this, you'll only need a plastic bottle and some thick whipping cream. First of all, make sure you wash and clean the bottle thoroughly. Then pour the cream inside. The exact amount depends on whether you want to make whipped cream or butter. I was making this for the first time, so I just added the whole carton, which was about 250 milliliters or 8 ounces of cream. If you only want to make butter, then you actually need a lot less. I'm estimating about just 2 or 3 tablespoons of liquid cream would be enough. Now screw the lid firmly back into place and start shaking. After a few minutes, you'll notice the mixture turn thicker and stop moving around. Once you can't feel any movement at all inside the bottle, you can cut it open and scoop out your whipped cream. This actually took a lot less time than I expected, and it's so much easier to do and easier to clean up than using a kitchen mixer. What you have now is basically fresh whipped cream that you can use for desserts, cakes, coffees, or any other recipe. I think this hack is super useful if you're a student, or if you don't want to clean up a whole bunch of kitchen equipment. I wish I had known about this when I was in university, because I loved baking, but I had such a tiny kitchen and nothing to make whipped cream with. So now, if you want to keep going and make butter, simply place a few tablespoons of whipped cream back into the bottle and then seal it up with tape. If you want to make salted butter, then just add a pinch of salt to the cream at this point before taping it up. Now start shaking again. This part should only take a minute or two, and you'll suddenly notice that the bottle starts filling up with liquid. This is called buttermilk, and it means that all the fat has separated from the water. Now pour away the buttermilk, and you'll see that you have a clump of pure butter inside. Cut it open again and scoop everything out of the spoon. You can squeeze the butter between some kitchen towels to get rid of any excess liquid, and then shape it using wax paper or silicone molds. This is super creamy and tastes absolutely delicious. I honestly had no idea that it was this easy to make your own butter or whipped cream. It literally only took 5 minutes of shaking a bottle, and there's no washing up to do. This homemade butter won't keep as long as commercial brands, so please make sure you use it up within a few days. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll have lots of fun making these. You can always share your work with me by tagging me on your pictures or by using my hashtag macaroon. I'm Joanna, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!